you. Good afternoon. You're five nine plus. My name is Sam Sugar, America, Mexico, some seventy kilometers north of Zagreb. Over. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So I was recently thinking about trying a different antenna at home for receiving and transmitting on the higher HF bands. I then come across a seven band HF cobweb antenna made by a fellow ham from Poland. Now after exchanging a few emails with Paul and learning that he's made and sold his cobweb antennas to hundreds of friends and ham radio operators around the world, I decided that this antenna was the one that I wanted to try. Now after a couple of weeks of waiting, the cobweb finally arrived here in the UK. Now I just had to wait for a nice day so I could spend some time assembling and installing this antenna in my small garden. Now what's nice about this particular design that Paul has made is that it's also designed to be used portable with a really clever folding mechanism for the wire support arms. Now upon unboxing the antenna, I was quite surprised that Paul had printed out some really clear instructions which detail which tie wraps to cut first. Now this makes it extremely easy to deploy the antenna the first time. With the UK weather finally providing some much needed sunlight, I took the packaged cobweb into the garden. So the first tie wrap to cut is the lower one, which holds the spreader and the aluminium arms together. Now after cutting this, the spreaders and wire was easily removed. Next, I needed to cut the green tie wrap at the top of the yellow spreaders. Careful here as they are under slight bit of tension and will most likely ping out sideways. Now with these removed, I can now remove the green and brown tie wraps which hold the bottom of the spreaders together. You'll also notice a couple of green tie wraps on the pole mounting hardware to snip these to release the U-bolts. Now we need to insert the yellow part of the spreaders into the aluminium tubes. Now luckily Paul has numbered each of these so it's nice and easy to get the correct spreaders matched. Now I started attaching these with both parts laying on the floor. I then soon realised I had inserted one of the spreaders into the wrong hole, so I leaned it up against the fence to have a gravity assist with the other spreaders while I fixed my mistake. Now you will notice that each of the aluminium tubes have a nut and bolt through them. There's no need to remove these as their purpose is to act as a stop so that the spreaders do not go far into the tubing. After making sure each spreader was in its correct tubing, it was now time to mount this onto a pole. I just used a 1.5 metre pole which was secured against another pole which I'd previously cemented into the ground. Now this brought the cobweb to a nice height for me to work on and bring out the spreaders into their resting position. With the cobweb base plate firmly fixed to the pole, I was ready to lower the spreaders. However, I had forgotten to cut some of the tie wraps which held the wires in place. So after a couple of up and down trips on the ladder to cut the tie wraps, I could now bring the spreaders down to their final resting position. Now what you'll see here is that each of the aluminium tubes are anchored on a kind of pivot. Now once fully down and in place, we can now fix the supplied fixing bolts to stop the spreaders from rising. Now this is just the case of inserting the bolt and then attaching the nut on the other end. Do this for each spreader and you're good to go. Double check to make sure all of the wire elements are free and not mangled together, and then attach your coax to the underside of the connection box. Now this box is fully waterproof, so leaving it outside as a permanent installation is not a problem. With all of my pole sections added together, this will put the cobweb up at around six meters off the ground. Now for me, I cannot really go any higher, otherwise my neighbors will most likely start throwing their wet washing at it. Now with the help of my teenage son, I was able to get the mast upright and attach it securely to the cemented ground post. As an extra precaution, I used a guy rope clamp near the top of the mast and then ran three guy wires off the various places in the garden. This will hopefully provide some stability and take the pressure off of that ground post. Now before we hook it up to a radio, I now need to test the SWR for all bands that it supports. So I connected my VNA and took some readings. Now Paul does actually pre-tune this antenna before it's shipped to you. So in theory, you might not need to make any adjustments to its tuning, but it is a good idea to check each band before you connect your radio and start transmitting. Of course, if you need to, you can adjust each band independently of the others to get that fine tune in the part of the band that you like. 
So 20 meters, we see a dip around 14.1 with an SWR of 1.3, and then it rises up to around 1.7 at the higher band's edge. 17 meters appears to show a nice SWR of less than 1.57 across the whole band. As you can see, the dip is to the far left, but with a small amount of adjustment, we could bring this more central if required. Now, 15 meters also shows a nice dip of around 21.19 megahertz, with the band edges around two. So that's a bit narrower than the previous bands. 12 meters shows the dip around 24.9 megahertz. However, the SWR is below 1.29 across the entire band. Now on 10 meters, we see the dip around 28.5 megahertz, which is the center of activity for voice SSB. The band edges do go upwards of a two SWR, but the dip can be adjusted to suit your needs as required. So if you wanted the CW portion, that dip could be brought down, or if you wanted more the FM portion, you could raise that dip higher. Now six meters, we see the dip around 50.2 megahertz with an SWR of lower than 1.76 across the whole six meter band. And with four meters on 70 megahertz, we see a nice SWR of below 1.29 across the entire band. So with the antenna check for SWR on all bands, let's go ahead and make a contact. Okay, 73, uh, uh, Danny, see you next time. Uh, thanks for the call. 983 Ocean Sugar for anybody else. Uh, Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey. Uh, M0DQW, good afternoon, you're five nine plus. My name is Sam Sugar, America, Mexico, some 70 kilometers north of Zagreb, over. Yeah, very good afternoon, Sam. Yeah, you're five nine plus 20. Uh, I'm just testing a, uh, a new antenna that I've just put up. Uh, it's just a multi-band cobweb that I got from a uh, fellow ham from Poland. And uh, I've got it up about six meters, uh, running 100 watts from a FTDX10. But uh, yeah, you're stonking into the UK this afternoon, Sam. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you very much for the good report. Uh, and finally, the uh, cobweb antenna and uh, FT, uh, you said FTDX10. Oh, I wish I were you. The, you have a nice, uh, nice receiver over there. Uh, you might tell me your name. I would like to have it over. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Yeah, it's Matt, Mexico Alpha Tango QSL. Roger, Roger, Matt. Very good. Well, a, a, a lovely signal here. The cobweb antenna is doing a super job for you uh, because I was able to pull it up, uh, pull it out from the pilot that I got in frequency. A lot of, a lot of people is calling. So when it managed to get through, that is a, a, a very simple indication that the setup is doing a good job for you. So I congratulations on that. And of course, uh, thanks for the call. According to my log, this is uh, our first contact. M0DQW, 983 Ocean Sugar is listening. Over. Yeah, okay, no problem. Thank you very much for the contacts, and I'll let you carry on uh, with uh, all those thousands of contacts. <laughs> Have a lovely weekend, M0DQW. Bye-bye. Roger, Matt. Very good. You came up to 50 Norway 9 just to let you know. A fantastic signal. And thanks uh, for the call. Have a nice weekend as well. 983 Ocean Sugar. Any other station? So to see how well this antenna works against my multiband NFED half-wave, I performed some A and B tests using my SDR receiver and an antenna switching switch. Now overall, 20 meters seem to have a major edge on the cobweb compared to the NFED half wave, with some signals as much as five S points stronger on the cobweb. In fact, all of the other bands were better on the cobweb than compared to the NFED half wave, apart from 10 meters. The NFED half wave definitely had the edge over the cobweb on 28 megs. Now luck would have it, but there was literally no activity on four or six meters at the time of me testing this antenna. The antenna is still up in the air, so I will be testing over the next few weeks. Now I have heard though that they do work extremely well on six and four. So I guess for those bands to work well, the antenna would benefit from being above the roof line of the house. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're looking for a small HF antenna that will fit in a small size garden, then take a look at the cobweb. Paul does ship worldwide and I will leave a link in the description below where you can buy it directly from his eBay page. Also, he's very active and he will respond to you if you want to send him a message. He also does a 40 meter version as well, although I think it's a bit larger and it may not fit in my garden. Until the next video, stay safe, take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.